Hello and welcome. This is a tutorial for processing and it's going to be on menu systems. So we're going to be looking at some basic menu systems for a game and all right, I have a processing window open here, but we're not going to start with processing. We're actually going to start with this little paint document just to explain a couple of things. So menus in game. So main menu, that's the one we always see when we load into the game and it's probably the most important menu there is because it stems out to every other menu and into the gameplay. So second thing we might have on the page is gameplay or a start button or something like that and that's where we can actually start the game from. and. In this, we're not just talking about menu systems, we're also talking about game states. Menu systems and game states are slightly different, but we're going to go into that. But in the code, they don't always look that different. Um, something else you might have is settings and controls, how to play the game, that sort of stuff, settings, change, um, sound, graphics, uh, your controls, and that sort of thing. And usually there's an end game. Um, so when you die, character finishes, you get a score and all that sort of stuff and may prompt you to go back to the main menu. Um, some games have levels, so you might hit start game and it goes to a level selector. Um, and then there are a few little hidden extra things like resets and the hidden menus that happen automatically when you click on certain things. Um, or we might even have a menu system inside one of our menu systems. So in gameplay, we might have pause and settings that we can access from within the game that are a game menu. But you might be saying, okay, gameplay isn't a menu. No, it's not exactly a menu. It's more of a game state. And menus and game states, yeah, they, they are similar. Menus are a way of navigating around to get to certain areas inside your game. Um, and then game states is how the game's running what, where are you actually in the game? So you might be on the main menu screen and you might be using a menu system inside that menu screen. But then inside the actual, when you hit play, you might be actually running the game, but that on its own needs to have its own state that it's in. Um, and a pretty good example of this is in a previous project that we did, we did, uh, dodgeball and just drag it over here so this is the main menu it's got one button on it start and this goes to the game state of the gameplay and yeah it, it makes sure that nothing else runs in the background so we could play this game muck around do that and when we hit one of these circles that changes us to another game state which is the end game state which has its own menu system of reset and um yeah, that allows us to go back to the main menu. So that one doesn't have too many um, game states or menus as well, um, but it does have a couple. That did have a main menu. It had some button functionality to go to the game state, which is of the running game. And then it had a game state at the end, which was the score with another menu system to go back to the beginning. So we're going to look at what that looks like in processing because they're going to look very similar. The game state, the menu systems are going to look very, very similar. So in a previous video, which I'll probably link in the description, we did a button class. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it straight out of my uh, dodgeball game, the button class. So I'm going to copy it over. So copying code code that you've already created is a really great way and I'm just going to bump my size of my uh, uh, text up so you can see it a bit easier so class button and we've got all our properties in there so if you want to just grab that out of your old code if you've been following along to some of my tutorials if you haven't leave it on the screen there's all our variables here we've got our instantiating a button um, that we'll use. Uh, we've got our updates and that's a little bit longer than I expected it to be. So this F statement here, if, you just, if you're trying to copy it down, 
then just yeah pause the video and just take a look at that um, again if you've already got the code just copy it out of your old project just scroll down a bit here that's the end of our update and then we got render down here and a uh, is the button clicked uh, boolean statement just a, a function to check to see if the button has been clicked down the bottom here all right so that's our button class and we're just going to get back to our menu so we set it up in the same way we always do void setup and void draw all right so we need the same sort of stuff we always do we need size of our window I'm going to make mine 600 by 600 and that's about all we're going to put in there we need a background in here and we're just going to make it a nice gray color all right so from here now we need to create menu system and if you have done some of my other work then you'll notice that uh, we have user menu system, but we haven't really talked about them. So, I, my menu systems that I create, I use a switch statement. Now, a switch statement looks something like this. I'm just going to write down my switch statement. And I'm just going to leave that blank for a second. And it has brackets around it. Now, in my switch statement, my switch statement needs... A variable it can be an integer a float um, it could be a string if you want it to be um, I usually use integers just because they're the simplest form of a variable and uh, they don't take up too much space it's pretty quick to access all that sort of stuff and so I'm gonna set at the top of my program I'm gonna set up an image for um, let's call it uh, menu it's equal to zero and usually my zero menu is my main menu. So I'm going to put in here menu. In my switch, I'm going to put menu. So now it's accessing menu and at the moment it sets to zero. So what do I need to do now? I need to set up some cases to say if it's a number, do this. If it's a different number, do this. If it's a different number, do this. And that's how we're going to go with the, um, creating our menus slash game states all right so we can go case and we're going to put our first number which was zero and then it's a col full colon and then we're going to have a bracket bracket and a break and i like to put my break on the same line as my closing bracket just just makes it nice and neat and says between there and there that's one case so case to break that's one of my cases and this one is zero all right so we might want another case Let's say we have another case and we're going to make that one okay we've got two cases we've got two cases all right so now there is a default case we'll get into that a bit later but at the moment we're just going to leave default case alone because we've only got two cases and we don't we're not necessarily going to accidentally jump out of our case statement yet now at the top of the program i always like to put under my integer um, we're going to put a comment and this is how you do a bigger comment and we're going to go case zero is menu or main menu okay and case one is uh, let's go gameplay or maybe in this case it's going to be show box Oop, what did i do there i think i just hit a button show box all right so main menu and show box all right so I guess in our main menu we need to put some code now so everything that 
we if we ran the program at the moment, it'd just come up blank because we haven't put anything inside our cases. But what it would show now is if I put um, some text in here that just says "Hello world," and we just set a nice little position there, and then I said text box. And we put some yeah, 50, 50. What do you think is going to happen? When I run this code, what do you think is going to happen? As long as it doesn't error out, hopefully you think it should write hello world and box. Will it write both of them? Let's have a look, see what happens. All right. It wrote hello world, but it didn't write box. Why didn't it write box? So it didn't write box because in our switch statement, it's looking at menu and saying, what's menu equal to? And at the moment, menu is equal to zero. So it's only picking up the case that has the same value, so it's zero. And the only thing we've got written in here is text hello world. So that's why it's only reading text hello world in the top corner. I'm just going to add a little bit of... Um, text size just so you can read it a little bit easier there we go let's just rerun that all right there we go hello world. and it's only showing that up because case is equal to uh, the menu that variable menu is equal to zero and our case zero has that written in it if I was to change my menu to one and run it again it should say box and it's also positioned at point fifty fifty on the screen so that just shows the most basic concept of a menu system now how do we navigate between these two and this is where our button class comes into play we created a button class so that we can change between the two game states all right so let's let's go create a button at the top here i'm just going to create a button uh did i put a capital b on it yes i did uh okay and main uh, main menu oops button bam all right got a main menu button i'm going to copy that and i'm going to create equals new button now I need some information what information we're going to need is comes from our constructor just remember that you can always reference what it needs from the constructor and I need an XY position I need a width the height I need some string as to what the text is going to say and I need the color of the button so X and Y position let's put it at width divided by 2 height divided by 2 um oops what make sure you can spell um now what do we need next we need our width and our height all right so let's go 100 by 100 oh we don't need that let's go 80. uh we're gonna go with what's the text gonna say we're gonna say um show box now is that the right way to write text no it's not we need our brackets around it or our quotation marks i should say uh what else do we need we need the colors now uh let's pick a nice color if you can tell me what that color is before i hit the program you're doing pretty well red green and blue so lots of red lots of blue might come out a bit purplish color all right so we've got created our button but have we uh instantiated this we've instantiated this button but we have we updated and rendered this button no we haven't now we only want this button to show up in the main menu so which case is our main menu our main menu case is zero so we're going to copy that and we're going to put it in here and we're going to go dot up, uh, update. 
and we're gonna go dot render and that should update and render our button when we show the menu at the moment what have we got selected though we've got box selected because our main integer is starting at one we need it to start at zero and here we go i was right it's purple all right and it doesn't do anything at the moment it just shows us this it doesn't doesn't give as much all right but we have a button in here so now what do we need to do to get our button to actually change to the next case we need to let's have a look in our button class we need to is it clicked and that's our function here we need to see if we clicked on our button because if we did that we want it to change to the next state so uh, okay. control paste up there dot is clicked now what do we need to put this inside? An if statement. So we're going to say if this is clicked, and it's going to turn true or false, do something. And we need to open closing brackets. So if that's clicked, that returns, is clicked returns either true or false. If it's true, we want it to do something. If it's false, we don't. What do we want it to do if we if the button has been clicked? Think about that for a second. We want to change our variable for menu equal to one because we want to go to the next state. So we're going to change the value of menu and hopefully that means box will come up as text. Let's have a little look at that and see what happens. All right, here we go. Show box. Box, excellent. And we can't go back because there's no more button there because it's not rendering that button anymore because that button was in the uh, main menu case, which was case zero. Our menu is set to one now, so it's gone to our next menu, which is box. All right, so if we wanted to go back, all we'd have to create is another button. I'm just gonna copy this text and create a new button, but I'm gonna call it something different. I need to copy it up here as well. Bam, and see, they can't be the same name, so I'm going to go box button. Uh, box button, and we can't, so show box. I'm going to go, and uh, we're going to go back to main. Back to main. And we're going to set it to the bottom of the screen minus. 50 off the bottom of the screen and we're going to have that box only 50 so it touches the bottom of the screen oh, I don't like it usually touching so I go 80 up and 70 there and so we've instantiated our new box let's grab that copy it so we don't have to rewrite stuff because programmers are lazy and we like to copy dot render put the now I'm putting this inside the case one, which our which is our box case. So we're going to do that, and we're going to do dot update. Bam. And the final thing we need to do, right, let's just run that, see if that works. So we start out in zero case, which is our main menu. Should probably move that hello world across. Show box, and oh, there we go. Box is popping up, and we've got a button down bottom down here but we can't click on it at the moment because we haven't set up our if statement yet uh, it says back to main and as you can see the text goes wider than the box so we probably should change that too so we're just going to change a couple little things we're just going to push this across a little bit maybe not that much 120 and we're going to make our box a bit wider at 150 just remember it's x y width height the name of our box and then the color of our box we might change that too to something a bit different yep different color box and what's the last thing we need to do in our case oh we don't have a new statement yet we're going to go box underscore button 
and then we're going to go dot is clicked asking a question about if statement and you guys spell clicked right and we want our menu to go back equal to zero all right so that'll hopefully push it back to the main menu let's run that and see what happens so we've got hello world we can see that now show box bang show box oh we've got a nice lovely green button down the bottom here to go back and as you can see we can bounce between our two menus all right that's looking pretty good at the moment so what's the final thing we're going to look at we're going to look at just the default for a switch statement as well so as i was saying um, somewhere in the middle of this video that at the moment we've just got two cases and it's pretty hard to get lost in our cases um, we we've got case zero and case one and um, our button just goes to case one and it goes back to case zero but what happens if i go to case three um, this this sounds like a really bad idea we only got case zero and case one just skipping two we're going to go straight to three so if i run this program now Go this hello world, perfect, show box, click on that, shows the box, click on that, goes blank. We got nothing. All right, didn't crash the program, but just got nothing. So what we're gonna put in place down the bottom here is still inside our switch loop, and just remember that's our marker there and that's our marker there inside the switch. And we're gonna put the default. And in this default, we're still going to have a break. We are going to put some codes. Now, what default does is if you ever accidentally, say, put in the number three and you've only got two cases, which is zero and one, it means it'll run this bit of code. And I'm just going to put a little bit of text in here and just go, um, you are lost. Because if you end up here, you probably are lost and let's see what happens when we run that all right we've got our hello world show box goes to box now when we go to back we've set it to three what's going to happen it pops up with the default text of you are lost so anything we put in default will happen even if we set that number menu equal to 100 it's going to pop up with default because that is not a case that has been set as soon as you set that to a case it will to be able to recognize it and run the code inside that case but just in case you get stuck um, it might be a good idea to have the default set up in here and maybe even set up a new button so that it, you can get yourself back to the main menu um, it's also a good way maybe to say um, if you're getting to this state, then you need to go check through and check that all your buttons are directed to a path that um, is actually part of your switch statement. So just check those sorts of things. So this is a really basic um, look at game states and how you can create menu systems inside programming. You can see that the game state for gameplay versus the menu, it's, it can be the same switch. You could have another switch inside your switch. Uh, it might be in game case one that you have it stay inside the menu, uh, main menu, or you stay on the main menu screen, but then you have multiple screens within that. So you might have your settings and all that sort of stuff inside another switch. You could just write inside here, you could write switch, and then have another switch, which is menu state. Uh, states which could be another variable and you could have a whole another set of cases and you could have another case it's called case zero because you're inside a new switch statement inside your switch statement and then you could have say uh, controls um, level select all that sort of stuff and you just be flicking between those states um, and you're in the overall state of the me main menu uh, that's a little bit more complicated we might go into that in another video of how we can set up more complicated game states um, I did talk about having like um, 
special states in um, our menu, which is like a reset. And it's where, say, at the end of the game, you go back to main menu. But before it gets to main menu, it might go through a switch that says reset everything and then just automatically change to the menu system. So it might be nine is your reset. So at the end of the game, you go from eight, which was your end game, and it goes to nine, and it does some checks. It might delete some objects and uh, reset some buttons and things like that. It might reset the score, might reset the lives, and then once it's finished writing that code, at the bottom it says change your menu state back to zero, which is your main menu, and you're back at your main menu loop. Um, so resets are kind of useful in just hiding some of the stuff in the background but having it separated from everything else and you might want to um, you might have it at the end of the game you've won the game and you go to reset to reset everything or when you die it goes to that one as well so multiple paths could lead to a reset or and multiple places might lead to the main menu you might you know if you go into controls you got to go back to the main menu but if you're in game and you pause the game and then you can click to go back to the main menu so there might be multiple paths that you can take to get back to the main menu and it's sometimes good to map those sorts of things out if you've got a complicated uh, menu system and lots of different game states it might be a good idea to write that down even on a piece of paper or draw a map on the computer and have little lines going everywhere to what part and you can even see that I've drawn some lines on here in gameplay goes to pause goes to setting I might have pause can go back to main menu uh, might have end game going down to here and then reset going back all the way up to main menu uh, this might be part of this main menu might be able to go here and here and as you can see it might start to get a little complicated and this might be able to go back and forth between two states um, and as you can see I'm putting arrows on here to make it easier for me to read what my menu system might be doing and as you can see gameplay you might pause and then go back to gameplay you might come out of uh, settings and go back into pause and that sort of thing so you might have to make up a little map of your menu systems and game comes down to here level select might be coming up the main menu coming into here level select might mean you go back to oh now we're running out of spaces to put arrows might go to gameplay or it might just go back to up in here again so as you can see it started getting very complicated even with just a couple little menu systems here I've got on my screen uh, but yeah so map out your menu systems play around with um, your, your switch statements get them working um, obviously if you've got any errors your code won't work so I might just put my integer up here uh, what, what did I call that variable menu states and I'll just chuck that up in there and it equals zero so you know and I might have that state and it, it, if it's part of that state it's like uh, we might put text it might be like oh, first time time and you know that text me what want to display near, near the bottom of the screen so height uh, minus a hundred and you know the first time you run the game it might come up as okay so now we've got a state that says it in there and then or another case we're getting a little off track but I just want to show you that you could have a switch inside a switch and this could be uh, second time and if we had a method of changing that so it might be second time might be when you complete the game it comes up with an extra little thing and you know it might run at this time and it doesn't pop up because I didn't change my game state or well, I did to two but I changed that see that I should have put a default on uh, but I didn't and so it should be one and there we go it's coming up with the second time so that's a game state inside a game state of a menu system so it can get a little bit complicated so play around with it 
come up with a menu system if you're creating a game at the moment. Um, yeah, menus are really important. They're, they make it easy for people to navigate, and there is a lot of there is a lot of um, planning involved in making a menu system that's effective. It's easy to navigate. People know where to go, what to do, and how to do it, and make sure it also works within your code of getting you uh, set up or making sure that you finish off states and things like that. So I'm going to leave that video here at the 30 minute mark and um, I look forward to the next video.